What is up guys, Rick Hackus here, and today we're going to be going over the best upgrades for your base of operations in the division. Now we're not going to be focusing on what skills to unlock, that's personal preference, but we're rather going to be focusing on the talents and upgrades that come with unlocking uh, these certain skills that are going to help your progression through the game. Now we're going to start out here with the security wing. There is a ton of extremely useful upgrades in the security wing. And first off though, let's go over something I think all division players should uh, know, especially those who may have not purchased the game yet. Now the first mission I would recommend doing is obviously kind of the first mission available, the Madison Field Hospital mission, available at level 4 and geared to much lower level players. Now then, the choice is pretty much yours. You could hop over here and do the first tech mission, Subway Morgue, uh, level 6. You can maybe hop over here if you're a higher level and do the Hudson Refugee Camp. Or you can do the Lincoln Tunnel Checkpoint. It is level 5. Now for me, I actually did the Madison Field Hospital and then I did Subway Morgue. This is not what you want to do. You want to be doing the Lincoln Tunnel Checkpoint as quickly as possible. And here's why. We can see when we open the security wing upgrades, the first security wing upgrade that you have, the situation room, is going to increase experience gained from all activities by 10%. So every activity, every side mission, every encounter, every mission you do without this situation room upgrade, you are getting 10% less experience than you otherwise could. So unlock your security wing as quickly as possible. If you want to, you may even want to do the security wing mission first so you can capitalize on that experience gained. Now another great upgrade is Armory. Armory is very good because it comes with firstly increased grenade inventory slot by uh, one, that's going to be useful in pretty much every fight, and secondly it comes with the advanced weaponry salesman. Now I'm going to go over here to the advanced weaponry salesman, you can see that he is a new NPC player that you get when you buy that upgrade who sells purple weapons and attachments. So this is just going to be another great way to get really good weapons as you're progressing through the game. He always has two different purple weapons for sale once you reach level 16. Before then he's going to have blues for sale, but in any event he's going to have one weapon that's your level, as you can see the double barrel sawed off shotgun here, and one weapon that's one above your level. So you can buy that if you're, you know, just going to advance. If you think that by the time you reach the next level, you're going to be outgunned. And that's a really good option to have, as well as obviously those purple attachments too. Now let's head back uh, to the security wing and discuss some more very useful upgrades. Now after Armory, we have Barracks, and this again comes with an experience gain boost. In this case, increased experience gained from accolades by 25%. Those are going to be the things that pop up, for example, headshots, multi-kills that give a little bit of experience boost. This is going to increase that experience gained by 25%, and again, just net you more experience overall, which is going to help you advance throughout the game. Next, we have Dark Zone Ops. Now, this this isn't absolutely essential, but it's pretty useful because it comes with two useful things. Firstly, it comes with a perk that increases your Dark Zone inventory by one slot, so no longer are you carrying six items, you can carry and extract up to, for example, I have nine right now because of all the perks I have purchased, and it comes with a black market vendor, which is right over here. Now, he is a Dark Zone vendor. He is selling Dark Zone stuff. This SSR looks actually pretty amazing. And this is going to be quite useful for players who play a lot of Dark Zone. Just having another Dark Zone vendor available in the base of operations is going to give you a greater chance to find something you really want to buy. Now let's move over to the medical wing and look at the upgrades that I would really recommend. Clinic is the very first upgrade that you have to unlock, so pay no attention to that. But Virus Lab and other perks that have this secondary perk, Protective Measures, are quite useful. This is going to increase your virus protection by one, and you can gain access to those higher contaminated areas. I'm sure a lot of you remember when you were doing the Mass and Field Hospital mission, uh, when you had that area in it that was contaminated level of two, and if you were in it too long, you would die. This is going to raise your contaminated level 
level 2-2 so you can be in that area without dying. Now, in the full game, this is a lot more useful. There's a lot of areas that now have high contamination levels. For example, in the dark zone, when you first go into the dark zone and you go down the subway tunnel that's near the very first entrance that was in the beta, that subway tunnel in the beta was a great place to get loot. And there was a, just a million different chests you could get. However, in the full game, it has a contamination level of 4. So you will die if unless you have that contamination level covered. So make sure you're looking uh, for these type of perks so that you can be upgrading your resistance to these contaminated areas. It is a very useful perk to have. Now the next upgrade I would definitely recommend is counseling. Unlock counseling earlier rather than later. And the reason being is because you want this perk active for as long as possible. And you can see that the perk, what it does, is it increases credit gain, so the money you gain for PvE currency, by 10%. So 10% across the board, you're going to be getting more money. More money for selling stuff, more money uh, for looting stuff. All of that is going to give you 10% more, which is very useful if you're trying to buy, for example, something from the advanced weapon salesman. They use the normal PvE currency. So you want to be getting as much of that as possible. And again, that's really going to help you out just to have a better chance and better resources when it comes to buying good purple weapons from, again, for example, that advanced weapon seller. Now, lastly, we're going to look here at the tech wing upgrades. Now, Control Room is the first upgrade that you have to buy, but aside from that, there's some useful perks like uh, Communications, uh, which gives you more Dark Zone inventory that you can carry. But aside from that, the thing that I would really recommend is way down here with Recharge Center. And the reason being is because it comes with the Dark Zone Funds perk, which increases the Dark Zone Funds, so that increases your Dark Zone currency by 10%. So it's exactly like the perk we were talking about over in the medical center that increased just your normal PvE currency gains by 10%, but this is your dark zone funds are increased by 10%. So this is going to be a very useful addition for any player interested in the dark zone. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar who played the beta with the grind for dark zone currency, so this recharge center perk is really going to help with that, and I again would recommend it to any player who Who's interested in the dark zone. Now one more little tip here before I go, remember that when you're looking at the weapons vendor things look pretty bland but you have to scroll all the way down to find the purples. I know a lot of you probably do know about this but I just want to make it abundantly clear so no one is looking at a bunch of greens and going when is he ever going to sell anything good. Now that's going to be it for the video, I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and sharing this video. Now if you want to see more division content, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way is to follow me on Twitter. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.